Hi guys, my name is Samantha. This is a beginner verbling class. Um, this is going to be a grammar class about prepositions. So we're looking at a bunch of different prepositions. So it's kind of a mixed preposition class. Um, hopefully I will be able to answer any questions that you have about prepositions. And you will get lots of practice. Um, deciding which preposition you should use in different circumstances. So we're going to look at um, a bunch of different prepositions. We have on, at, in, of, to, for, with, over, and by. Okay, um, and we might even look at others if we have time. Hi Robert. Hi. Hi. Hello, how are you? Hello, do you hear me? Yeah. Oh, fine, thanks. Uh, and thank you for your question. We are uh, both uh, me and my uh, friend Aniku. Hello. Anika? Uh, uh, we, <laughs> we want to learn something uh, interesting for, from you. And cool. We are fine, thanks. Where are you from? We are from Hungary. Okay, very cool. And it's Anika and Robert? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so to everyone, if you have reservations, you can join class right now. So verbling.com slash get reservations. Um, you can get reservations by liking the Facebook page, um, inviting your friends, or you can become a premium member for 25 bucks a month, and that allows you to have unlimited reservations for classes. Otherwise, you can join class as soon as the button is green. I think it should be green right now. <laughs> so come on in, and we'll start. Just wait for some more people to join. Hi, Adela. Hi, Samantha. How are you again? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, thanks. Hey, Maria. Hi. <laughs> Prepositions is difficult. Yeah, I know. Um, even for advanced intermediate students, it's, it's difficult. They're difficult for everyone. <laughs> you might yeah. need a, re a review, and I'm sure you probably have some questions. So. Yeah, I heard a good explanation about on, at, and in. Oh, but, did you? Yeah, but it's not applicable for every... Every, every circumstance situation yeah. yeah so this is mostly going to be talking about the basics but if you have questions about specific circumstances definitely ask and we can talk about them um, prancing pony hi hi I forget um, your name Chefy mm, you recognize me sorry Oh, Sheffy. Yeah. Right? Like that? Yes, I remember. Okay. And mm, May suit? <laughs> May suit de Merci? Are you there? The de Merci? Maybe not. And hi, Samir. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good, good. And where are you Show from? Is here. I'm from Saudi Arabia. You're from... Where, sorry? Uh, I'm from Saudi Arabia. Okay, cool. Nice to see you. And... Adela, where are you from? I forget. I'm from Spain. Spain, right, okay. So um, today we're going to be talking about prepositions. Um, we're going to do lots of practice 
and I will hopefully be able to answer your questions. Okay. Um, sometimes when we're using certain phrasing, the general rules don't apply. So um, if you have questions, you can go ahead and ask them, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I put a document on Google Drive for you. It's the document that we're going to be using today. But I will also share my screen. So you can look it off of my screen if you want to, whatever works best for you. OK, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is just kind of go over the different prepositions. And then we will do practice afterwards. OK, so I'm just going to share my screen. Again, you have the document on Google Drive, and I gave you the link up at the top. Okay. So maybe, um, Maria, would you like to read the first part here for us? Uh, yes. Uh, the first part, the, uh, until usage, or how long? Yep, until myself. OK. okay. Uh, prepositions on, at, and in. A preposition is a word that links a noun, pronoun, or noun phrase to some other part of the sentence. Prepositions can be tricky for tricky for English learners. There is no definite rule or formula for choosing a preposition. In the beginning stage of learning the language, you should try to identify preposition when reading or listening in English and recognize its, its use to the office, at the desk, on the table, in an hour, about myself. Okay, so they just gave us a list of some random prepositions to start. Um, so a preposition is used to show direction, location, or time and to introduce an object. So we're going to look at a few of the most common prepositions. The first one is on. I can probably make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So there's a list here of different usages for on. First one says used to express a surface of something. So I put an egg on the kitchen table the paper is on my desk. So the most common use of usage of on is when you're literally saying that something is on top of something else or sitting on a desk, sitting on a table. Okay. Um, we also use on to specify days and dates. So the garbage truck comes on Wednesdays. I was born on the 14th day of June or you could say June 14th in 1988. So you use it for dates and days. Third usage, to indicate a device or a machine, like a phone or a computer. He is on the phone right now. She has been on the computer since this morning. My favorite movie will be on TV tonight. So when you're talking about something appearing on television, on the computer, or when you're talking about using a phone, a computer, a TV, you use on. So when you're echoing. Okay. And hello to everyone who's joining us and to everyone outside. Okay, so we use it to indicate a device or a machine, or that we're using a device or a machine. We also use on to indicate parts of the body. Okay, so the stick hit me on my shoulder. He kissed me on the cheek. I wear a ring on my finger. So we use it to talk about parts of the body when something is, that when you're wearing something on your body, or if somebody hits you or kisses you or if you're having physical contact, we use on. Um, Maria, you can't hear anything? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I, uh, I have refreshed. When I saw that, I was like, I really hope I'm not muted because <laughs> I've been talking for like three minutes. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I can hear um, you. Okay. He kissed me on my cheek. I wear a ring on my finger. It's also used to indicate the state 
of something. So everything in this store is on sale. The building is on fire. So the state of things in the store, they're on sale. You can also say on clearance. Um, the state of the building, it's on fire. Okay. So we mostly use on to express that something is on a surface. To yeah, specify days and dates. <laughs> to talk about devices and machines, yeah. like using the phone. To talk about parts of the body, like kissing someone on the cheek, or to indicate the state of something. Everything is on sale. The building is on fire. Any questions about on? Or are there any other usages that you're unsure about? I have one usage yeah, that sure. I want to ask about. Uh, it's sometimes you use on instead of about, for example. Uh, if you would put a title on this class, it would be Samantha on prepositions. It's like right. about. So can you explain that? Because I don't understand it. Okay. <laughs> so if something is, let me see if I can give you another example. I could title this class, like you said, Samantha on prepositions. So when you're talking about something or presenting something, then you can say a person on a topic. And it's it's fragmented to say that. To say Samantha on prepositions, it's not a proper sentence. It's just kind of a shortened, fragmented way to say that someone is talking about something or presenting something. So you know how in speaking classes we sometimes watch TED Talks? Yes. For all of those TED Talks, I could say so-and-so on this topic. Yeah. Right? So it's just kind of, I don't know how else to explain it except that it's just a fragmented short way of saying that someone is talking about something rather but than saying Samantha talking about or discussing. It's gra grammatically correct? It's grammatically correct, but it is fragmented. Uh -huh. So it's just like a very short way to title that someone is talking about a certain topic. So in a full sentence, in writing, you would not use that? No. Okay. It wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it doesn't work in full writing, but it does work as like a title. Understood. Um, it's the same as when you read like a newspaper title. A lot of the time newspaper titles are fragmented. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of similar to that. A lot of newspaper titles wouldn't work in a full sentence, yeah. but they do work as titles. So it's just a way to very briefly kind of state something. Um, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. First time on verbling? Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. On verbling, yeah. yeah. Um, any other questions about on? It's a little bit tricky because and this is a class, so it should be in in the class, but on verbling. Is it? Be because it's because of the whole device or computer thing. Okay, okay. Because it's online, <laughs> it's on a website. It's on it's a surface. Time on <laughs> verbling. If <laughs> verbling was a a face to face group that we walked to into a room to mm -hmm. see everyone, then yeah. we would say it's my first time, you know, in this class or mm -hmm. in this, yeah. But because it's on the computer. It's a little bit different. Okay. So yeah. that goes with kind of the device or computer thing, like you're on the phone, on verbling. Um, any other on questions? No. Okay. Let's take a look at at. So while we use on to talk about a day or a date, Wednesday, June 14th, we use at to point out a specific specific time. Okay, so I will meet you at 12 p.m. The bus will stop here at 5.45. Okay, so we use at for a specific time. We also use at to indicate a place. There is a party at the clubhouse. There were hundreds of people at the park. We saw a baseball game at the stadium. Okay, so we use it to indicate that you're being, that you are at a place. So there's a party at the clubhouse. That's where it's located. 
okay, place or location. Um, we use it to indicate an email address. Email me at abc at defg.com. Okay. So if you're telling someone to email you, you tell them to email you at this, this certain email. Or you could say, um, send an email to. Um, also, we use it to indicate an activity. He laughed at my acting. I am good at drawing a portrait. So an activity that you do, if you're talking about that activity, you use at. He laughed at my acting. I'm good at drawing. Okay? So we use at mostly for a specific time, a place, a location. To indicate an email address, usually this would be in a cover letter or to indicate an activity. Um, any questions about at? Yes. <laughs> Good. Ask. <laughs> Can I ask? Okay. Uh, yeah. The example of the baseball game and the park here, if that would be present tense, we would use in, wouldn't we? There are hundreds of people in the park. If it takes place right now. Because yeah. the park is a space, right? The and the right. stadium is an enclosed area, mm -hmm. a, a enclosed space. So, so we could say there are hundreds of people in the stadium. Or you can say there are hundreds of people at the stadium. Is it bo both are correct? They are both correct. Okay, but if I'm talking about you, if you are in the stadium, mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm talking, I'm telling my friend, oh, Samantha, she's in the stadium right now. Okay, mm -hmm. because you are there right now. So that would be inside. And You can also use at. Mm -hmm. I heard another explanation, but yeah. Don't know. Okay. What else did? What other explanation did you hear? That it depends on the time. <clears throat> it depends on uh, where you are at the moment. So if you, if I am in the library, I'm calling my friend outside, and mm -hmm. I, I can say I'm in the library. So if you're in an enclosed space. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when I go out, and tell my friend, oh, I was at the library earlier today. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> but it's not easy. <laughs> and type, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> in the library right now. I was at the library. But then I heard like on the, I'm on I'm on the main street in the city. But then if I'm at an intersection, then I'm at the intersection. Yeah. So when we're talking about directions, it's I'm on main street. I'm on the corner, I'm at the intersection, or I'm at a specific address, I'm at 5 Main Street. So <laughs> I know it gets it gets tricky when you're talking about directions, um, but you do say you're on a street, I'm on the street, I'm on Main Street, or you say you're on the corner, mm -hmm. I'm at the intersection. <laughs> You don't say I'm on the intersection. No, because it's a spot. I don't know. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so within and at, when you're talking about um, enclosed spaces, I don't know if I would actually agree with the tense thing. Like it depends if you're there right now or if you were there. Because you could also say, I'm at the library right now. Okay. I was at the library earlier. Or you can say, I'm in the library right now. So um, I don't know how exactly mm -hmm. you're saying. But you, okay. you can use both. Can I say uh, I, I, I am I'm studying at university? I'm studying? At university. Yeah. Yep. I can say that. Yep. I'm studying at university. Yep, because it's a place. Okay. So it's it's like this example. Okay. If, if, if someone asks me, where are you? Can I say I am in university or I am at university? Okay, if you say I am in university, it means 
I attend a university. It means I go to university. I'm studying a program right now. I'm in university. But if you say I am at or I'm I'm at the university, it means I'm located at the university campus right now. It's talking about the place. If you say I'm in university, it means I study in university. It's it's more general. Cool. So if I were to tell you um, a few years ago, like, I'm in university studying English right now. That means, in general, I go to university. If you say I'm at the university, it means you're physically on campus at university studying. So if, if you wanted to meet someone, they would have to come to the university to meet you right now. You see the difference? Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Nesit, are you there? Okay, some background noise. Maria, do you have any other questions? I know it's very vast. <laughs> Not right now. Not right now, okay. Um, hopefully we can answer them. <laughs> because it does get complicated and sometimes there are some cases where they're interchangeable. So It's kind of good because that means you can't really mess them up when they're interchangeable. <laughs> But it also makes it more, it can make it more confusing. So generally, though, we use at for a place um, or a specific time. And we use on for a more general time. Um, OK. Should we look at in? Yep. OK. So um, maybe would someone else like to read? Or is it easier when I'm reading for you guys? I don't know. No volunteers, so I will read. <laughs> so. Okay, I can. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, used for um, specific times during a day, month, season, year. She, al she, she always reads newspaper in the morning. In the summer, we have a rainy season for three weeks. The new semester will start in March, used to indicate the uh, allocation of place. She looked me directly in the eyes. I am currently staying in a hotel. My hometown is Los Angeles, which is, uh, which is in California, used to indicate a uh, shop, shape, a shape, uh, color, or size. This uh, this painting is mostly in two. The student stood in a circle. The jacket comes in four different sizes. Used to express will uh, doing something in preparing uh, for the final report. We received uh, the tone three times. Catch press needs to be impressive in marking a uh, product. Used to indicate a plea, opinion, interest or feeling, I believe in the next life, we are not interested, interested in uh, gambling. Very good. Okay, so generally we use in for unspecific times, in the morning, in the summer. We use it to indicate a location or a place. She looked me directly in the eyes. I am currently staying in a hotel. My hometown is in California. We also use it for shape, color, or size. This painting is mostly in blue. The student stood in a circle. This jacket comes in four different sizes. So in sizes, in a color, in a shape. Um, you also use it to express while doing something. So you use it before a gerund in preparing for the final report, in marketing a product. And we use it to indicate a belief, opinion, interest, or feeling. I believe in. We are not interested in. OK. Any questions about in? Do you need anything clarified? Shape. A shape is like a square, a circle, triangle, rectangle. 
Those are all shapes. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I, I was going to say, um, I teach, teach children, and I happen to have these sitting on my desk. Okay. Circle. <laughs> I have a question uh, about summer. Uh, in the second phrase, in the summer we have a rain season for three weeks. Um, can I say in summer? You can say in s in summer only or in the summer. Is correctly? Is it correctly? So or is it correct in summer? I'm gonna type it. Let me copy this. First, you okay. okay. You can say in summer, um, meaning all summers. Yeah. So if you say in summer, we usually have a rainy season for three weeks, or in the summer we will have a rainy season or in the summer it will be rainy. So Maria's got it. So saying in the summer is usually more specific, talking about this summer, next summer, last summer. If you just say in summer, like saying in summer it's hot. It just okay. means in general all the time summer is hot, right? Okay. So in the summer is a little bit more specific. So it is correct, it just depends on the circumstances. Okay, okay thanks. You're welcome. Um, at night is an exception. <laughs> so you can say in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at night. Okay. okay. It's an exception. Yeah. And we talked about that when we were talking about the clock. I don't know if anyone was here for that class, but um, it's an exception. At noon. Yeah, Hazel. Mm -hmm. At noon, at midnight. Of course, there are never rules without exceptions. It's true. At midnight. Um, any other questions about in so far? Or at or on? <laughs> no? Okay. If you think of questions as we go, you can ask them, okay? <laughs> Um, let's do a quick review and see if we understand in, at, on. So I want to lose five kilograms. Oh, sorry, there should be an S there. Five kilograms. In, at, on, one month. Is it in one month, at one month, or on one month? On. Should we type or shall? <laughs> you can just say it. <laughs> Oh, there's some types. So, sorry, I didn't notice the chat. Sorry. <laughs> in. In one month. Okay. Could you get me these pants? Sorry, I have other <laughs> typing mistakes. Could you get me these pants on a larger size, in or at? In. In. Good. In I don't a know larger why, size. but it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, why? Because we use it to indicate shape, color, or size. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, she seems to be interested on, at, or in psychology. At. In. 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 Yes. In. Interested in. Remember, we use it when we're talking about a belief, opinion, interest, or feeling. We are not interested in gambling. She is interested in psychology. Okay. I will come pick you up on at in 2 p.m. tomorrow. At. At. Good. At 2 p.m. tomorrow. And number five, this class will be held on at or in Mondays. On um, Mondays. On Mondays. Good. So we use at for a specific time, and we're using on for a general time, on Mondays at 2 p.m. Okay, um, so I, I'm going to ask you guys, would you like to do more practice with in, at, on, or would you rather do some other prepositions? It's up to you.
<laughs> some other prepositions. I don't okay. know what the other ones, but uh, I'm curious about the other ones. Okay. I was kind of thinking that's what we would do. So let's look at of, to, and for. Okay. Of, to, and for. So, of is first. So would anyone like to read of for us? Okay. Okay, sure. Adela, go ahead. A preposition of two and four. Of, a use for belonging to, relating to, or connected with. For example, the secret of this game is that you can't ever win. The highlight of the show is at the end. The first page of the book describes the author, uh, author's profile. Don't touch it. That's the bag of my friend's sister. I always dream of being rich and famous. A use to indicate reference. For example, I got married in the summer of 2000. Uh, this is a picture of my family. I got a discount of this 10% uh, of the purchase. A use to indicate an amount or a number. I drank three cups of milk. A large number of people gathered to protest. I had only four hours of sleep during the last two days. He got a perfect score of five on his writing assignment. Perfect. I just realized I should have been highlighting them <laughs> as we were going. So I'll start now. Um, great. Thanks, Adela. So we use of for belonging to, relating to, or connected with. Oops. I didn't mean to highlight that one. <laughs> we use it to indicate reference, to indicate an amount or a number, like in measuring. So with the first one, the secret of the game, the highlight of the show, the first page of the book. So you're talking about things that are related to or connected to something else. That's the bag of my friend's sister. It belongs to my friend's sister. Now, this is a slightly awkward sentence, um, but it's just to show you that you can use it in that way. The bag of my friend's sister. Um, I always dreamed of becoming rich. Okay? You also use it for reference of a time or a reference to something, like a picture of my family, the summer of 2000. I got a discount of 10%. You're referring to the discount. You're referring to your family. You're referring to the time period. Okay, so a reference. Um, and for an amount or a number, three cups of milk, a large number of people. I had only four hours of sleep, should be blue there, <laughs> hours of sleep. A perfect score of five. Okay. Um, any questions about of? The example of the the bag, the norm, the normal way to say that right. would be. That's my friend's sister's bag. That bag, bag. belongs Her. to. Right. So you could either say, and <laughs> um, let me copy this. Okay. The bag of my friend's sister. That's my friend's sister's bag. That bag is my friend's sister's. That bag belongs to my friend's sister. Right? So there's different ways to say it. Uh, but the idea was just to show you that you can use of to show that something belongs to someone. So this is the apple of my roommate. But it sounds a bit awkward to say it that way. Um, it, it is grammatically correct, though. Hey, Firkin, did you have a question? Uh, no. I thought you might have been joining to ask something <laughs> if you were watching. Um, we're yet. just talking about prepositions. Oh, that's my weakest link. And as I, as I talk, I realize that this is intermediate, not beginner. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's getting more complicated. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions about of? I think it's probably one of the easier ones to determine. We're okay? 
Okay, let's look at the next one. Two. And you guys do have a copy of this document um, on Google Drive, so if you need to review, well, I have to zoom out. I don't know why that's so long. <laughs> um, so you'll have you have a copy to kind of look back at if you want to review after class. Um, let's look at two. Where's the doc? It is right here. Okay. So would anybody like to read two? I can read if okay, no one go ahead. Sure. At so human weird. speed. <laughs> oh god, I can't find it. It's on my screen. Okay. You used to indicate the place, person, or thing that someone or something moves to, to, towards or the direction of something. I'm heading to the entrance of the building. The package was mailed to Mr. Kim yesterday. All of us went to the movie theater. Please send it back to me. You used to indicate a limit or an ending point. The snow was piled up to the roof. The stock prices rose up to $100. Use it to indicate the relationship. This letter is very important to your admission. My answer to your question is in, in, in this envelope. It Do needs an e, sorry, typo. <laughs> Do not respond to every little thing in your life. Use to indicate a time or a period. I work 9 to 6, Monday to Friday. It is now 10 to 5. In other words, it is 4, 5 to... Ah. 4.50. What was the other way to say that? Oh, okay, it's oh, 10, 10 to 5, five. <laughs> or, it's, or it's 4.50. Remember when we looked at the clock? I can't remember. All, yeah, all so of. when you're looking at a clock, I don't, I don't have a clock in here. No, I don't. But um, when you're looking at a clock, if it's on, I don't know which, <laughs> if it's past the 30, from 30 to 60, you say it's five minutes two. If it's from one to thirty, it's five minutes after or past. So in this case, they said it's ten to five, or it's four fifty. Yeah. Okay. Um. I wish I had a clock. I should really get a clock just so I can do those lessons without having to draw. <laughs> um, okay. So two. Again, it's used to indicate a person, place, or thing that someone or something moves in the direction of. I'm heading to, where's my highlighter? I'm heading to. The package was mailed to. All of us went to the movie theater. Please send it back to me. Okay, so talking about a direction. Used to indicate or limit an ending point. Snow was piled up to the roof. The prices rose up to $100. Relationship. So this letter is very important to your admission. So in this case, you're saying that something is important to something else. That's indicating the relationship between the letter and your admission. The relationship between your answer and this envelope. Okay. My answer to your question. Do not respond to every little thing. Um, and a time period. I work 9 to 6, Monday to Friday. Or it's 10 to 5. And that goes back to the clock when we looked at the clock. 10 to 5, it's 5 to 12. It's quarter to 10. Okay, so we use ten, 2 when we're talking about time, expressions of time. Okay. Um, any questions about two or any tricky situations? Um, yeah, the first sentence. The first sentence. Uh, would it be incorrect to say I'm heading towards? Nope, that's fine. Is it the same thing or what is, how do you distinguish two and towards? It's the <laughs> same thing in this case. Okay. You can be heading towards something or you can say you're heading to something. If you're heading toward, you can also say to. Okay. When you're talking about walking or moving or driving to something. If you were to use that, if you tried to replace the second sentence with toward, 
it wouldn't work. You don't mail something toward someone. Okay, you mail but, it but to you them. can be headed towards like I don't know some some A school. I'm yeah, some goal in your life. Towards that building or yeah. yeah. So if you're physically moving t to something, then you can use toward. Okay. Okay, with people, not with not with mail or thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you could replace the first one with towards. Yeah. Other questions? Firkin, did you have a question? So I thought someone. Yeah, one more. Uh, if you would say, if you were to say, all of us went towards the movie theater. That means meaning. You are not going into the theater. Right. You're just moving towards the building. Yeah. Okay. So it's like you're walking towards the movie theater and then you're standing outside of the movie theater. Okay. And then you go into the movie theater. So okay, okay. if you're walking towards a building, that doesn't imply that you're going in it. It just means you're walking in that direction. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say that you're actually going in the building, then you need to use either we go in the building or we're going to the movie theater. That implies that you're going in. Yeah. In which cases can I use them interchangeably? Okay. Um, one second. Let's take a look at toward. Okay. Preposition to is another common preposition of place. We usually use it with the verb showing movement, and it shows the result of the movement. The place or person that the movement was toward or in the direction of, like I just mentioned, right? So that's pretty much what we just said. The preposition toward has a similar meaning, but it's not exactly the same. With toward, the direction of the movement is shown, but not the result. So like what me and Maria were just saying about the movies, you're walking towards the movies or the movie theater, but we don't know what you're doing there. You're just walking that way. Okay, so you need to indicate when you're, when, if you want to show the results of your movement, you need to use to. So I'm walking toward the school. And then, <laughs> right, so it doesn't tell us what's actually the result of, of your movement. It just shows that you're going in a certain direction and doesn't tell us why or if you're going to go in or what, okay? So, B to A, <laughs> B arrived at A, B toward A, B is on the way to A, but we don't know exactly what's going to happen, okay? A to B, A arrived at B, but A toward B is on the way to B. We don't know what's going to happen. So it's just talking yeah. about the direction. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Examples. Jamil walks to work every day. We understand that he walks to his office building and then goes inside. Okay. When I saw Jamil, he was walking toward his office. Now we know that he's in, going in that direction, but we don't know that he's going right in. He might stop for a coffee or something, right? It doesn't imply that he's going inside. They'll drive to San Francisco during the weekend. They started driving toward San Francisco, but they didn't arrive there until Saturday. Yesterday, Billy rode his bike to the park. We understand that he arrived there and played at the park, right? When Billy was riding his bicycle toward the park, he stopped at Joey's house. Okay, so it's just showing direction, but not result. Um, and I th think, okay. Yes, that pretty much covers it. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it's oh. very clear. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, any other questions about to or toward, since we've gone to We've been using toward as well. No? All good? 
if you're unsure about the time thing, like 10 to 5, I can try to find the link for you where we talked about clocks. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know where it is. I'll look and find it and put it on Facebook. <laughs> um, okay, let's take a look at 4. So would anyone like to read 4? Make it bigger. Okay. Sure, go ahead, Samir. For use to indicate the use of something, this place is for expedition and shows. I packed a, cu a cake for your birthday. I put not on the door of the face. She has been studying hard for the final exam. Used to mean because of I am so happy for you. We feel deeply sorry for your loss. For this reason, I have decided to why this job used to indicate time or duration is being famous for many decades. I attended the university for one year only. This is all I have for today. Perfect. Okay. And I'm kind of highlighting as you go because <laughs> just to, um, okay. So for, we use it to indicate the use of something. It's used for this purpose. It's used for exhibitions. I baked a cake for your birthday. The purpose of this cake is your birthday. Okay. I put a note on the door for privacy. Privacy is the purpose of the note or the use of the note. She has been studying for the exam. Her pur the purpose of her studying or the use of her studying is for the exam. Um, we also use it to mean because of, I am so happy for you, I'm deeply sorry for your loss, for this reason, I've decided to quit the job. Um, and we use it for time as well, so there's lots of prepositions used for time, right? Um, in this case, you can use it to indicate um, he's been famous for many decades. How long has he been famous? For many decades. How long did you attend university? for one year. How much do you have for today? This is all I have for today. So how long have you been doing something? That's That pretty much covers four. Um, do you have any questions or other scenarios where you use four that you're unsure about? Uh, time period, yeah. So how long for ten years? So, uh, so asking about a period of time. Yeah, for, for a while, that works too. So something more general you could say as well. Any questions about four? Well, that will take a lot of time to remember all of these terms. That's why I gave you the document. <laughs> um, but I have lots of different websites if you need practice. This is just kind of trying to outline when you use them and then the practice and actually using them is what will help you remember them. <laughs> so, Can we jump the exercises and go through the other prepositions as well? Is that, I don't know, is it stupid? <laughs> no, we can do that. Um, you guys have the exercises. I'll give them to you and paste them in the chat too. Um, but you have them in the document. So if you want to use the last 10 minutes for with, over, and by, that's fine by me. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So now we're going to look at with, over, and by. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yeah, Furkan, sure. uh, yeah, Furkan wrote in the chat for a while. Uh, for a while, it's a short time or a long time, or I don't know. It's hard to explain. For for a while, it just it doesn't necessarily mean a short period of time. It kind of depends on the context and also on your how you say something. So if you ask, um, how long have you lived in Paris? If you were to ask me that. I would say, oh, for a while, um, I just moved here in August. So it's not really a specific length of time. But you could also say, 
I haven't been to France for a while. Yeah. If someone asked you, when was the last time you visited London? I could say, oh, I haven't visited London for a while. Um, the last time I was there was like four or five years ago. So it sort of depends on how you're expressing what you're saying. And there isn't really a specific use. It just means for a certain time period. Longer than a week, kind of longer than a month. Um, but not as long as like 15 years. That would be for a very long time. Okay, so it's hard to give you an exact time period. But if, yeah, I haven't can seen I say, it for a while. Can I say for a period of time? Or? Yep, for a, for a period of time for a while, for a long time. You can also say for a short while. Sounds kind of British <laughs> to say for a short while. Um, I probably wouldn't say that, but my grandparents probably would. So. Any other questions about four? Oh, sorry, a while or a while, please don't. Why don't you want me to answer it? <laughs> Because it will take a long time. Yes, it will. Okay, let's take a look at with, over, and and uh, by just before the end of class. Um, who would like to read? Anybody? Me? Because I I'll yeah. read because yeah. I can get Hi. through it. Quickly. Me. <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Okay. We only have seven minutes. <laughs> can I read it? Sure. Go ahead, Alberto. Okay. Uh, four. No. What? With. With yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, I used to indicate being together or being involved. I ordered a sandwich with a drink. He was with his friend when he saw me. She has been working with her sister and the nail shop. The manager will be with you shortly. Used to indicate having. I met a guy with green eyes. Were you the one talking with an accent? People with a lot of a lot of money are not always happy. You used to indicate using. I wrote a letter with the pen you gave me. This is the soap that I made with rice and barley. He cut my hair with his gold scissors. Used to indicate feeling. I'm emailing you. Sorry, I'm emailing you with my sincerest apology. He came to the front stage with confidence. Used to indicate agreement or understanding. Are you with me? Yes, I am completely with you. She agrees with me. Perfect, thanks. So, we use it to indicate being together or involved. I ordered a sandwich with a drink. He was with his friend. Okay, two people were together. Your sandwich will come with a drink. Those two things are together. We also use with to indicate that you have something. A guy with green eyes, talking with an accent. So it's something that you have. You have green eyes, you have an accent. Okay, we use it to indicate using. I wrote a letter with the pen. So using the pen. This is the soup that I made with rice. I used rice in the soup. He used gold scissors to cut my hair. He cut my hair with scissors. Um, you use it to indicate feeling. I'm emailing you with an apology. He came to the stage with confidence. So you're expressing a feeling that you had while you were doing something. Okay. Also, it's for agreement. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. She agrees with me. So agreement or understanding. Um, any questions about, excuse me, about with? No? Are you with me? Does it mean? It means, it means are you on the same page? Are okay. you with me? Do you, you understand? Do you understand? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You say, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I get it. I agree or I understand, depending on the context. Okay. Are we going to have time? I don't know if we'll get to 
by. Okay, I'm going to try to go through this really quickly. So, over. Over is used to indicate movement from one place to another. Come over to my house for dinner. Could you roll over? They sent over a gift. So it's talking about moving from one place to another. Telling someone to come over. Telling someone to roll over. Usually you only tell a dog to roll over. Right? <laughs> You don't normally tell your friends to roll over on the ground. Um, they sent over a gift. You also use it to indicate moving downward. The tree fell over. Can you bend over? He pushed it over. So movement from one place to another, movement downward. Also we use it to talk about something that is more than an expected amount. This amount is over our prediction. Kids 12 years and over can watch this movie. The phone rang for over a minute. So when you're saying that something took longer than you thought it could, then you would use over. Or if you're talking about people's age, people are 12 years and over, they can watch this movie more than an expected number. Um, and a period of time. I worked there over a year. She did not sleep there over this past month. Okay. Is this clear? Do you have questions about over? Uh, uh, can I say I, 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 I traveled all over the world? Pulled over? All, all over the world. I yeah, an expression like a police officer pulled me over on the side of the road or something. Or you can say, I pulled over to the side of the road. It's an expression, pulled over, or a phrasal, phrasal verb. Any other questions about over? No? OK. Could you say, I traveled over a country? <laughs> No, of course you can't. Through. You would say you, through. You could if you wanted to say that, like, you're looking out the window of a plane and you're, like, traveling over, but not really. No. Around. That's weird. I can't say around. around yeah, you'd world. probably say I, I traveled through a country if you're going from one to another. Hmm. Um, unless you're specifically indicating that you were, like, looking out of a window and you were above another country. But it sounds a bit awkward. Yeah. <laughs> um... Okay, just before the end, I'm going to try to get through by really, really quickly. So we use by to indicate proximity. Can I sit by you? He was standing by me. So proximity means how close you are to something. So can I sit by you or near you? He was standing by me. The post office is by the bank. Okay. It's also used to indicate the person that does something in a passive voice in the sentence. The microwave was fixed by the mechanic. Something was delivered by a postman. The branch huh? office was closed by the head office. So when you're using the passive, you use by. Can I in say fact, This sentence would be a postman delivered the flowers, right? In the passive, the flowers... This sentence would be a postman oh. delivered the flowers, right? Oops. Passive, the flowers. Ah! <laughs> I think that was me, sorry. Um, used to indicate an action with a particular purpose. You can pass the exam by preparing for it. I express my feeling by writing a letter. She finally broke the record by pure effort. So an action with a particular purpose. And also a mean or a method. Please send this package to Russia by airmail. I came here by subway. Um, I drove to work by car. I, wa I went by foot means you walked. Okay. I know we went through them really quickly, so here's my Facebook, and you also have the link. So I would recommend maybe reading over it one more time. And I have, uh, Samantha, I have a small question. Okay. Can I say I I I live in by the sea or I live in very close to sea? Yep, I live by the sea. It means near. So near. you can you yeah exactly. Okay. Is from a preposition. Yes. Thank you. 
Yeah, from is a preposition. Yes. Um, so again, I would recommend you maybe going over that, them one more time. If you like my page on Facebook, after class I'm going to post a bunch of exercises for you to practice and you can always ask me questions there. So if anything is unclear, send me a message, okay? Okay. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Class. Thank you. Okay, I'm teaching the next class starting in um, 30 seconds and it's advanced speaking. So hopefully okay. I'll see you guys there. Okay? Okay, okay bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.